Welcome to Healthy Bites. My name is Karen White and I am a registered dietitian living in the town of Westboro who's trying to help people to uh, eat better and one bite at a time. So uh, for today's show, we are on a field trip and for those of you who tune in all the time to Healthy Bites with Westboro TV, know that once a semester at Framingham State University, uh, we have a field trip and Westboro TV comes to campus and we tape a show uh, and with my students that are in a senior level class, so these students are uh, ready to graduate in May. They are uh, student dietitians in our coordinated program and they are the cream of the crop. So we are very proud of them. So they have put together an awesome show for you today. You are going to learn how to make uh, easy, some delicious side dishes, uh, an awesome granola, some awesome desserts, uh, a stir fry. So I want you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. And thank you for watching. and this is Taylor and this is Katie and we're students at Framingham State University and we're so excited to cook for you today. We're going to make a very simple stir fry that you can easily make at home that's got lots of protein and lots of nutrients in it. And if you make extras now then you can have great leftovers tomorrow for lunch. So first we're going to start with the sauce recipe. It's a peanut butter soy sauce mixture. So first you're going to start with the two teaspoons of peanut butter two tablespoons of soy sauce, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, one tablespoon of brown sugar, and one tablespoon of water. You're going to mix this until it's completely combined and then you're going to set aside. Um, one of the things that we like about this homemade recipe is that you can use no added salt peanut butter and a reduced sodium soy sauce to lower the sodium content as that it can be um, a heart healthy option. Additionally, making a recipe from scratch tends to be lower in salt and sugar than a store bought recipe and you can adjust the flavors to your liking. So now that the sauce is set aside, we're going to move on to the brown rice. We did prepare brown rice ahead of time. Um, and this we did on the stove top. However, you can also do a microwaved option. You can find a packet in the rice aisle and that typically takes only one or two minutes to make. Brown rice is a whole grain that's full of fiber and nutrients and can help keep you feeling full throughout the day. Next, we're gonna talk about the protein that we've chosen to use. We're using both tofu and chicken, but you can choose whatever source of protein you like. And you can use fish or you could use a meat. Um, Johanna is going to demonstrate how to make the tofu. So tofu comes packaged like this in water and it's very simple to, to cook. All you need to do is cut through the package and drain the water out over your sink. <laughs> it's a little messy, but it comes out in a very neat block of tofu. So then you just take it on your kitchen towel and pat it dry. It's like a sponge and it soaks up a lot of water. So you just want to make sure you get as much water out as you can. And for this recipe, we're just going to use half a block. So you want to cut it up into cubes and you want to make the cubes whatever bite size you like. The smaller the cube, the quicker they'll cook. So we're just going to cut that up into sort of rough cubes. We're going to put the oil in our pan and then just drop them in. The good thing about tofu is that you don't really have to worry too much about cross-contamination like you do with chicken. And it's already cooked, so if you don't have um, much time, this is very easy to do and can be done quickly. Next Taylor is going to demonstrate how to go about making the chicken. So I am also going to add the, I have a tablespoon of oil that I'm adding to the pan just to keep the chicken from sticking. This chicken I cut ahead of time, so when preparing chicken you want to make sure to wash your hands and also use a clean knife and cutting board because as Johanna mentioned, chicken has, has bacteria when it's raw so you want to make sure to keep it separate from your other ingredients until it's fully cooked. So I cooked this into about bite-sized chunks ahead of time and I'm just going to throw that in the pan 
And with chicken, you want to make sure that it cooks until the internal temperature is 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Or if you don't have a food thermometer, you just want to make sure that the inside is white and that the juices run clear. So next we're going to add the vegetables. You can use fro frozen vegetables like we have. They're very, very simple. And amazingly, you can drop them right into your pan and they'll thaw and the, the water will cook out of them. If you have some vegetables around that you would like to use in your refrigerator, you can use broccoli or peppers and onions, whatever, whatever appeals to you. Um, but the frozen vegetables are inexpensive and sometimes they can be even more um, nutritious than fresh vegetables. So this recipe calls for half a pound of frozen vegetables. So we're going to put half a pound in this pan and we're going to put about a half a pound in this pan. In this pan. And then we're just going to stir them around and, and wait for them to cook down. The water will cook out of them and then you'll have a nice stir fry. So while those are cooking, we've prepared ahead of time some chicken and uh, vegetables already prepared and cooked. And so we're gonna just take our brown rice mixture and add it together. And then we're gonna fold in the sauce that we prepared before. And just folding it in so that the ingredients get mixed together well and that the sauce covers everything. And then it's all ready to go and enjoy. All right, let's give it a try. This tastes great. Mm. Mm, so good. So remember, that's the chicken version. So if you're going to use tofu, the tofu that I used was extra firm. You can use other kinds, but, but extra firm holds together really nicely in a stir fry. Thank you for watching. Hello, my name is Tyler and this is Caitlin and we're senior nutrition students here at Framingham State University and today we're going to be making for you a fun and healthy granola recipe. But you might be saying to yourself at home, but isn't granola already healthy? While this might be true, most store-bought granolas are loaded with extra added sugars and since we're making it ourselves, we have the ability to control what we put into it and kind of you know, go a little bit lighter on the added sugars. And this is a recipe we adapted from our good friend Martha Stewart. All right, and so before we start, I'd just like to mention Tyler and I did wash our hands. We have nice clean hands, and we have preheated our oven to 300 degrees. So in this bowl here, we have four cups of old-fashioned oats, which are full of fiber, which are great for our bodies. Fiber helps lower our cholesterol, keeps us fuller longer so we can aid in weight loss, and it helps control our blood sugars as well as keep things moving along. Absolutely, and so to this oat mixture, we will add one cup of toast, or sorry, of slivered almonds, chopped. Give that a stir for you. A quarter cup of wheat germ. A quarter cup of unsalted sunflower seeds. And last but not least, a quarter cup of flax seeds whole. And these ingredients are full of unsaturated fat, which is heart healthy and can help lower cholesterol and prevent heart disease. And in addition to this, they're packed with a nutritive punch and provide tons of fiber and protein, which help us feel full longer after we're eating it. Yeah, and foods like wheat germ and flax seeds, because they're high in saturated fat, we want to make sure we keep them stored in a cool, dry place in an airtight container, or even keep it in your refrigerator. Those pesky unsaturated fats, <laughs> right? So for a nice little bit of flavor, we're going to spice it up with a half teaspoon of ground cinnamon and a half teaspoon of ground nutmeg. Give that a good mix here. And next we're going to add a third of a cup of canola oil. Lovely. And now you'll notice I'm going to use this same measuring cup without cleaning it out to pour in my half a cup of honey. And the reason why I'm doing that is the oil will help the honey slide out nice and easy. And one thing you can do that might help the honey come out a little bit faster when you're at home is pop it in the microwave for a few seconds. That'll loosen it up and it'll pour out nice and easy. Watch this magic, friends. Just like you see in the movies. Perfect. There we go. See? 
And we got most of it, and it slid out nice and easy. Good. And we're just going to give that a quick toss to combine it. This looks beautiful. So we have taken two baking sheets that we have lined with parchment paper and lightly sprayed with cooking spray. And what we're going to do is take our wonderful proto granola, we're going to evenly distribute it across both of our sheet pans. And what's critical here is that we're going to evenly spread it out to make sure that we can make cooking it nice and even so we don't get large clumps of burned pieces and large clumps of uncooked pieces. And when this is all set, we're gonna pop it into our preheated oven, which I mentioned earlier is ready to go at 300 degrees. These are gonna go in for 20 to 25 minutes until they turn what we call GBD, or golden brown and delicious. And once these end up going out of the oven, we're going to allow them to cool until they're able to be handled. We're going to break it up into little bite-sized pieces, and then, oh look, through the magic of television, we already have some prepared here for you. All right, and we've broken it up into small pieces. And next we're gonna add in our mix-in. So here we have a half a cup of golden raisins and a half a cup of unsweetened shredded coconut. And now if you don't care for raisins or coconut, you can add whatever you like. If you prefer craisins or dried cranberries, if you wanna omit the coconut entirely, you can use chocolate chips, whatever you prefer. And any type of nut seed is absolutely good in this recipe. So this is a wonderful on-the-go recipe for those of us that are looking for a nice satisfying crunch without necessarily reaching for something like potato chips. And this is wonderful served as prepared, but our preferred service method is with some fresh yogurt, fresh fruit, and then sprinkling some of our granola on top for a wonderful start to the, your morning day. Good. Well, thank you so much for watching. Today we made for you a wonderful fiber-rich, nutrient-dense granola that's going to give you all the nutrition of the wonderful things in here without all the added sugars that store-bought brands tend to add. Thank you so much. Bye. Hi, my name is Tori. And my name is Karen. We are student dietitians from Framingham State University. Are you looking for a healthy, easy, and inexpensive side dish? Marinated three bean salad is a delicious and nutritious dish that takes only minutes to assemble. This dish uses canned beans, which are both convenient and budget friendly. Today we will be using cannellini beans, kidney beans, and chopped green beans. Feel free to substitute with any beans that you have on hand or any that you like more. Uh, I think that chickpeas or black beans would be really good in this salad. To begin, you want to open your cans of beans, drain them, and rinse them well. We opted for no salt added or low sodium beans, but if you are having trouble finding reduced sodium beans at the grocery store, just make sure that you give your beans a really good rinse with cold water to get some of that salt off. Next, we want to add our canned beans to a large mixing bowl, and we have a cup of each of these types of beans. Beans are low in calories and contain many beneficial nutrients such as fiber, which help prevent constipation and keep you feeling full for longer. Beans are also good sources of protein, iron, which helps prevent anemia, and magnesium, which is important for heart and bone health. Our next step is to slice an onion. To slice the onion, begin by cutting it in half lengthwise from root to stem. Next, cut off the stem end, and then peel off the outer layer. It's that papery mm -hmm. layer on the outside. Okay. Garbage bowl. Next, you will want to slice the onion, and then separate the pieces. And we're doing nice thin slices. Now, if you don't have a red onion at home, you can use yellow or white onions would be great in this dish. Next, we will add our diced half of a red bell pepper. You can 
can use orange, yellow, green, any color that you like. Did you know that uh, the color of a bell pepper depends on its level of ripeness? So all bell peppers start off green, but they change color as they ripen, and they also get sweeter. All right, and one of our last steps is to add a half a cup of Italian salad dressing. If you don't have Italian salad dressing at home, you can use any oil-based dressing or you can um, simply put one together with oil and vinegar. Now we're gonna mix to combine. And you can see that we have a lot of nice color in here. We like to say eat the rainbow to get all those healthy vitamins and nutrients. And then what you'd wanna do is cover the bowl with plastic wrap and marinate in the refrigerator for at least one hour to get the flavors nice and strong. <laughs> Thank you for watching and we hope you try making marinated three bean salad at home. Incorporate more nutrient rich beans into your diet with this tasty and versatile dish. Very good. Hi, I'm Danielle. And I'm Caitlin. And today we're going to be making smashed potato bowls. Something about this meal is, is it's a great way to utilize anything that you have in your pantry. Um, we're utilizing black beans, some frozen items, so those are some things that a lot of us typically have on hand. We're rotating those out of our stock. Uh, so utilizing those items we already have is a great way to save money. Um, and we can also utilize uh, some lef leftover potatoes. So if you happen to have guests over and then you have a lot of mashed potatoes, let's get those out of the, out of the fridge. So we don't have any leftover potatoes, so we're just gonna use a baked potato. So we, um, we microwaved this potato for about 10 minutes just until it was soft. Um, and so now we're gonna add it to the bowl. We already have one potato mashed here, um, just for the sake of time. So the reason why we're keeping the uh, skin on the potato is because it has lots of nutrients and lots of fiber. Um, and then we're going to add, once that's all mashed, we're going to add just a quarter cup of milk. Just to make it a little bit smoother. Um, we use skim milk because it has less saturated fat and a diet low in saturated fat promotes heart health. So we're just make, mixing that until it's nice and smooth. All right. So it's ready to go in the bowl. So we're going to divide our three potatoes into each of the bowls evenly. Should be about a half cup to a cup of potatoes depending on the size of your potatoes. And get all that great skin. That's what makes it a smashed potato because we're keeping the skin on. All right and that should be enough. Our next ingredient is going to be frozen corn. So we're utilizing frozen corn because corn happens to not be in season right now. And utilizing those frozen vegetables or fruits is a great way to lock in nutrients without losing them, uh, transporting um, fresh fruits and vegetables from the farm. You can, if you don't have frozen uh, vegetables on hand, then you can utilize canned vegetables. Just one tip we have is to rinse off those uh, canned vegetables because they can be sitting in some uh, salt rich, sodium rich fluid. Okay. So our next ingredient we're gonna use is black beans. We use canned black beans and we rinse them to get rid of some of the extra salt. And when you rinse them, you can also get rid of some of the carbohydrates that can cause some discomfort um, and bloating when you eat beans. So we also are using a little bit of chili powder just to add some flavor and spice up those black beans. Chili powder is a great seasoning because it doesn't have any salt in it. So when we use that, we're not adding salt for those who are concerned about their salt intake. Beans are great because they're a plant-based protein, which means that they're naturally low in saturated fat and high in fiber. So she's just gonna just distribute a third of a cup into each, each bowl. It's roughly a third of a cup. You can use more or less depending on what you prefer. It also adds some nice color too. So we've got white versus black, some good contrast there. Our next ingredient is going to be avocado. 
So like we had talked about saturated fat before, um, an avocado is a plant-based um, source of fat. It's a monounsaturated fatty acid, and so that's great for our heart. Um, Danielle was able to take out the, the pit of the avocado fairly easily. You can just take a spoon and trace along the outside and pop the pit out. And we're going to utilize half of this, uh, a third of this half of an avocado. And so she just traces along the skin and is able to peel out the slices of avocado. And she's going to pop uh, each of these into the bowls. Uh, if you happen to have guacamole in your fridge, then feel free to use that as well. Uh, so it'll be about two tablespoons of guacamole. All right. Our last ingredient is a teaspoon of dried cilantro. Um, so we're just going to add a pinch to each just for flavor. Um, you can use fresh cilantro, you can use dried cilantro, you can use frozen cilantro, depending on what you have on hand. Okay. And last but not least is some shredded cheddar cheese. So we're you, you having uh, reduced fat shredded cheddar cheese, again for our heart health, uh, taking out a little bit of that saturated fat. So I'm just going to sprinkle in a little bit of cheese. I know I'm a big cheese fan. I'm sure there are other people out there. And that's enough. So just to review, this is a great recipe um, to get a couple of those pantry items out of our pantry, uh, utilize any leftovers that we might have in the fridge, save on cost a bit, and uh, share with friends too. So this is an easy recipe to have as one serving, to have as three, however many you want. All right, this is ready to serve, so enjoy your meal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching Healthy Bites, and we hope you enjoyed our show today. And as we end every show at Framingham State University, make every bite a healthy bite! Bye.